Ciao! Have you ever wondered how to integrate your Snowflake data with other cloud providers? Well, today is your day. In this video, you will learn about Snowflake external stages, what they are and how to use them based on the real case scenario. Stay tuned. But before we jump further, to work with external stages, you need two things, Snowflake account and cloud provider account. In this video, I will focus mostly on AWS S3, but as the external stages works very similar for every cloud provider, you can choose which you prefer. So what is external stage? To answer this question, you will need to first understand what is stage in Snowflake. So if you're not familiar with stages at all, check my previous video about internal stages and come back here once you finish. So once again, what is external stage? Imagine you have lots of data in the cloud and you want to bring it into Snowflake. That's where external stages come in. They are like virtual bridge that help you easily move data between Snowflake and cloud storage. External stage is an object within the Snowflake environment with defined credentials, settings, and location of data stored in the cloud. Users can access and manipulate data in these external stages using SQL commands in the same way as the data were directly within the Snowflake environment, which simplify the process a lot. Currently, Snowflake supports integration with three major cloud providers for external stages. Amazon S3, Azure Blob Storage, and Google Cloud Storage. You can create external stage to any of the cloud providers, regardless of the cloud platform that hosts your Snowflake account. For example, you can create the external stage to Amazon S3 while having a Snowflake account hosted on Google. External stages in Snowflake function similarly across different cloud providers. However, there are minor differences in how external stages are set up and referenced due to variations in the underlying cloud infrastructure. When it comes to differences between cloud providers, it's worth to mention that every cloud provider has its own prefix. So for example, AWS has S3 prefix, Google has GCS prefix and Azure has just Azure. The other one is the authentication. So we can distinguish two types of authentication by credentials and by storage integration. So um, when it comes to credentials, um, Google does not support this authentication at all. So the only option to connect is by storage integration. So for AWS is done by AWS keys in this case, and for Azure, it will be SAS token. And uh, it's worth to mention, AWS has one more additional authentication type, which is connecting by role. However, it's now deprecated and will be removed in the near future. So it's not recommended to use this option at all, but it's worth to mention it still exists. Snowflake highly recommend the use of storage integration instead of credentials. Storage integration is an object which holds a credentials, so you don't need to provide them every single time. I will discuss it in further in my upcoming video, so if you don't want to miss it, hit the subscribe button below. For encryption, each cloud provider has its own encryption mechanism. So this parameter is required only for loading from or unloading into encrypted files. So it's not often used. While these are general differences, which are used the most often, it's crucial to refer to the Snowflake documentation for the most accurate and up-to-date information as features and integrations may evolve over time. And for example, you can take the AWS authentication by role, which is currently um, deprecated and it's not recommended to, to use. Moving to workflow, in the first example, you can see that the data is moved, for example, from external storage to internal stage with the usage of external stage and then copy into, into a table. 
So you might think, why can't we just skip internal stage in this process? So it's important to note that the decision to move data from an external stage to an in internal stage before loading it into a table depends on the, on the specific requirements and consideration of your data pipeline. In many cases, directly loading data from an external stage, I mean, from an external storage with the usage of external stage into a table may be efficient and suitable for the use case. However, if the data are used in multiple tables, it may be quicker and more cost efficient to transfer this data to internal stage only once then download it, um, this data over the network every single time you need them. So same goes, uh, for example, with data transformation. So the answer to this question always depends to the situation. Okay, in a theory, let's move to some practical exercises. So I have the code already prepared and let's start with creation of external stage using the credentials. So my credentials, as you can see, don't use it. <laughs> so let's, let's recreate it. As you can see, this, um, this external stage gets successfully created. Then we'll have the storage integration, which is enabled. It's pointing to, to S3 packets. Uh, all the locations are allowed and it's using this particular role. I'm not gonna run it because then I would need to provide the external ID once again. I don't want to do it here in this video, but I will cover it in the upcoming video. But let's move to the creating another external stage, uh, but this time it will be using this one storage integration and it will be pointing to exactly the same AWS free packet, but just a different method of, of using it. It gets successfully created. Let's now list the, the data inside those, uh, those packets, those external stages to check if they are working in exactly the same way. So we've got some eight files here in different locations. Let's check another one, the integration. It looks very much the same. So I can assume it works in exactly the same way. To check the this external stage, we can also use the describe stage command and here to check the difference um, between between those stages. So first let's run the the external stage with the credential authentication. And if you scroll down, you can see the, the stage location, which is S3 Snowflake Ninja packet, and it's using the AWS key ID. So it means that this um, external stage is authenticated by credentials. For the second one, we'll use the describe stage command as well. We'll scroll down. And as you may see, it's using exactly the same stage location, Snowflake Ninja packet, but in this case, it's using the, the storage integration with AWS. And also it has a role, external ID and Snowflake IAM user, which is used for authentication here on this case. So now as we have connected to the external stage, we would like to load the data from external stage to internal stage and to, to the table finally. Uh, but before loading it, let's check it first to, to check if the data are are fine without any issues. So as you may see, we have 11 records here. The first, uh, the first row is the, the column names. So, so that's fine. But at the end, you could see that there are some data parsing issues. Uh, this field definitely look like it should be it should be one field in, instead of two. So it's always good to check before actually loading it. So we could now uh, create a file format to avoid those, those issues and download and to move the data from external stage to internal stage clear 
and in the appropriate format. So in this case, I'm creating the, the file format here. We'll skip the header for now. And uh, we'll use the, I would say, def default parameters like field optionally enclosed by, like record delimiter and the field delimiter as well. So now let's move it, let's select this data once again, but now with the usage of this file format, which we have just created. And now it looks perfectly fine. As you may see, uh, the last column is now, now empty. This data has been parsed in the correct way. So with this, with this format, we are now ready to move this data in, into the Snowflake. So to this one, we'll first load it into internal stage. So let's create the internal stage for this case. And now we'll copy the, this data um, to the internal stage using the same file format. Rows get unloaded. So let's list the files in the internal stage. As you may see, there's, there's a one file here. So it, it looks good. Now let's, let's query this one. And we can see the clear data here on the, on the internal stage, which now can be moved to, to a table or to a different tables. So in the next step, we'll load data from internal stage to a table. But if this table does not exist, we'll firstly create it. So I have this, this one, uh, this one common to create this table with the brand new um, file format. The difference is the parse header option, which in this case will not, there's no need to type column names because it, the, the header will be parsed. So and with this one, I'm, I'm able to really quickly create a, a table using the, using this, this file in the external stage. And it's because I'm using here external stage because as you have seen a few seconds ago, in the internal stage, there are no columns. Uh, so this, so this command using internal stage will, will not work. So now let's use the copy into this table from the from the internal stage. And I'm using here the parameter error on column count mismatch as false. And that's because in this case, um, if we had an issue on the external stage that the data were not parsed correctly, but if we would use um, this um, create table commands inferring the schema from the external stage, then there is the mismatch because there was 10, 10 columns and here after the clearing the data, there is only nine. So that's why I'm, I'm using here in, on this parameter. So now let's, let's select the data. And as you can see, data has been uploaded from the external stage uh very very quickly also with the header but there's no need to use external stage to to copy to a table you can also copy directly from external stage to a table without without uh the usage of internal stage so we'll here just truncate the data and we'll use the copy into from the external stage uh, with the, the file format we've used before. And as you may see, data looks very much the same. So as you are now familiar with usage exam examples, let's talk about money. So there are two main costs when it comes to usage of external stages. First one is storage which is different costs for every cloud provider. From Snowflake side, external stage object is store only metadata of the pointer, not the data itself. So the cost in this case would be very low unless you move this data to internal stage or a table. For the data transfer, 
um, cloud storage provider might charge a fee for transferring data from the provider to your Snowflake account. So it's always worth checking. From Snowflake side, it's free to move data into Snowflake, but you need to pay while moving data out of Snowflake, unless you transfer data to the same region and the same cloud provider. So to summarize what you've learned so far, external stage does not hold data itself, only metadata about the connection. It's like a window to your data. External stage feature is one of the most commonly used features in Snowflake, in my opinion. It offers great flexibility for data movement, processing and integration with other data sets. External stage does not replace internal stage, but rather they complement each other. While they offer great convenience, it's essential to consider associated costs such as data transfer and cloud storage fees. So if this topic was interesting to you, hit the subscribe button for more and let me know in the comments below which other functionalities you would like to see in my upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and may the data be with you. Ciao.